Good evening, everyone, for another episode of Dan Does Data. Tonight, you might notice the interface looks a little bit different. We're actually going to be studying a GUI-like interface using IPython notebooks, all based on this Jupyter notebook, which is just a generalization of IPython notebooks. You're going to see a bunch of code interspersed with some sweet pictures, interspersed with a bunch of other things. And you might wonder, oh, this is going to be a huge pain to install and set up all this stuff, just like every other machine learning and data science library. But wait, there's more. We're going to use this on an online website called Sage Math Cloud. For those of you who don't know, Sage is a sort of general purpose uh, computing extension to Python. And it includes Python and a whole bunch of other languages sort of bundled up together, originally just for IPython and other things. You can do symbolic math and all kinds of other stuff. Uh, for Sage, they developed this notebook idea where you've got a bunch of different cells which has some code or something else and some output, and the cells are very distinct. And so you can run a particular cell, and in the background it's all running in like an IPython notebook. They've taken this idea for Sage and generalized it into Jupyter, so maybe you're not running IPython in the background. Maybe you're running, I don't know, R or MATLAB or Julia or just straight up Bash, something else, something very general. Or maybe it's, maybe it's none of those. Maybe it's just code. Maybe it's just like HTML or Markdown or who knows, just some documentation. This has the benefit of giving you your uh, like visual output right in line with your code. So you can immediately see, oh, I did this plot, it gave me this. I really like the setup that I have using Vim and Tmux and Slimux, uh, but this is another good alternative. And because you can use Sage Math Cloud online, you don't need to install all this stuff. How it works is you go to cloud.sagemath.com and you either create an account or you log in with Google or GitHub or Facebook or whatever. And when you start, you won't see any projects. I've been using it for a little while. Uh, so I've been, I've got a few projects here. And the way that it works is Sage Math Cloud generates a virtual machine for you. If you just want, if you don't want to spend any money, you just want to try it out. They have a free tier, which gives you a very small virtual machine and isn't always available. And I'm really hoping it's available right now because I'm on the free tier. Uh, so it's no GPU, it's not very much memory, but for just playing around and seeing what works, uh, it's very nice. And you can see I've had a variety of different projects that I've opened up here, uh, just things I was doing, computations or something else. And you can have different projects open in different tabs. Now the benefit of Sage Math Cloud over a lot of other tools is that it comes pre-cooked with a lot of really nice uh, machine learning type software. It comes with sklearn, it comes with numpy, uh, it comes with different versions of Anaconda, Python 2, Python 3, you like R, it's got R, you like Bash, it's got Bash, uh, and I believe it comes with TensorFlow already pre-installed. I don't think it has Keras. Uh, back in the day I uh, ran like a, a workshop on how to install TensorFlow in here, but now I believe they're just doing that automatically. Here's some old project I did. Is this not even a notebook? This is not even a notebook. Wow. That blows my mind. I didn't realize that. I've just got some LaTeX document. You can preview a LaTeX document. This is sorcery that this works. I was doing some computations of some uh, vehicle headways like on a freeway. That's that's crazy. It does that. It's got built into its LaTeX like ticks, all this other great stuff. Super duper handy. So I just want to show this off a little bit. I have some familiarity with it. I don't use it all the time. But I think especially when you're just starting out, this can be a really, really nice thing to do. So I think the best way to do this is to just say, hey, let's create a new project. You can call it anything you want. I'm just going to call it Jupyter, which is what they call the notebook environment now. And description, we'll just say Dan does data stream of Jupyter. And yes, if you pay them money, you can get like an actual serious VM, more memory. Maybe you can get a GPU or something. I don't remember what cloud backend they're running on. If it's Amazon or Google or one of those things. I honestly cannot remember, which is silly. 
Uh, now, obviously, you can set up something like an IPython notebook, uh, or it is Jupyter Notebook, I should say, on your own virtual machine. But here, like, it's already pre-installed. Everything's already taken care of. So you come up with a new project. It starts with no file. So you have to create a file. And it sort of gives you the opportunity, like, well, you want a Sage Math worksheet? And it even tells you what it is. Or a Jupyter Notebook, which is sort of a general kind of thing. You can also work on LaTeX. If you just want to work on a terminal, you can do that. Let's, uh, let me show you the terminal. Just, it's like a regular, plain old terminal. It takes a little bit to load. Shouldn't take too long here. Bing, there we go. You get a terminal, you say, who am I? And you're some wacky name. And there you've got the file, which is the terminal. One catch, you don't have internet access directly uh, on your terminal here in your, your virtual machine. People were using SageMath Cloud to launch uh, DDoS attacks, and so they've taken that away, which makes sense. Uh, so if you want to install something else, you're going to have to fiddle around with it a little bit in order to get that working. I believe if you pay money, however, you do get you do get uh, that access. So let's delete that. We don't really need that right now. Let's make a new file. A Jupyter Notebook is really good what it's going to be. Uh, note that you don't have regular internet access. You can, however, just drop files in. So if you've got like a Python wheel file of, I don't know, TensorFlow or something else, or just data that you have, uh, you can just upload it sort of directly like this. Each file must be under 30 megabytes. Yeah. Oh, for bigger files, use SSH as in project settings. I didn't notice that. Where's project settings? Do we, this project not have full internet access? It's running on a free server. Much more heavily loaded than the other servers. Probably there is no SSH access. I would not be surprised. Ah, so you can see, if you don't use it for an hour, it gets turned off. Your data, I believe, is still saved. It's just turned off. You get to up to a gig of RAM, which is nice. And you can use up to three gigs of disk space. You get one CPU with one core. Not, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot at all. I don't see... Yeah, if there, you can share these with other people. I don't see a super obvious way for... Uh, for how to SSH in there. If you're free, that might just not be an option. It's the way it goes. So let's make a new Jupyter Notebook. This will bring up like a new interface of sort of what we had before. The tab I had open before was some, uh, from a previous workshop I had given. And boom, it drops you in here. This is, I believe, straight Python right now. You can say A equals four. You could enter, you're in a very primitive kind of text editor. And it's like control enter or shift enter will execute that line. And you know, well, nothing, nothing came out. Nothing spit back at me. Well, that's because there's you didn't tell it to. Look at that. It automatically gave me the closed parentheses. So nice. So control enter will say, hey, execute this. Shift enter says execute this and make a new, new cell. Everything's based on a cell. You can just say, hey, run all the cells. Run all the cells and put me in the next thing. You can change what kind of cell it is. You can say, hey, this isn't code. This is markdown. So I can say, Dan does data intro to Jupyter live stream. Boom. And then it renders it into a simple HTML. Isn't that great? Maybe I don't need this cell anymore. Maybe I delete this cell. I remember, edit. Yeah, delete, delete cells. Bam, gone. Double click on this and you're back in. I like it. It's super nice. So I really like, I like Sage Math Cloud, especially for beginners. If you're new to the, new to the machine learning world, it's a great way to play around with stuff. Okay, maybe you don't want Python. Maybe you want something else. Or maybe you want a special version of Python. Go over here to kernel, change kernels. There's a huge list of environments you can use. So I almost universally use Python 3. However, there's these other variations. There's Anaconda Python 3. Anaconda is sort of a pre-cooked version of Python 3, which a bunch of libraries installed. And Apache Spark, I'm not sure what the difference between those is. I imagine that's, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. On the Spark, uh, like cloud type service, that's probably just happens to be the version they use. Julia, another popular uh, language that's being used for a lot of things these days. I have a friend who's really into it. Octave, which is a sort of open source version of MATLAB, if you're familiar with that syntax. R, if you're a statistician. 
that's that's when you're gonna use that. And you see all these different versions of Sage Math, which Sage is a sort of a specialized version of Python with a bunch of a bunch of other things cooked in, like R and a bunch of plotting packages and all this other stuff. Tell you what, let's change the kernel to Apache Spark Anaconda Python 3. I'm not 100% sure. I do wish I could see, like, what all things do I get with that? And it's going to tell you, hey, i got to start this kernel. i got to stop this IPython baloney and uh, do whatever else. And it's like, boom, okay, now you're in a new kernel. Let's just go ahead and make a new, new cell just in case. And maybe you import TensorFlow as TF. I bet you can get away with this. You can, I think. The little asterisk means it's running it should respond and say I finished in just a second. Can I import NumPy as MP? Kernel starting, please wait. Yeah, the kernel crashed apparently. Or maybe I... I don't think I used up all the memory. Show chat. You can chat on particular files? This is crazy. I didn't know you could do this. Yeah, the kernel, kernel slowdown business is gonna be... that's gonna be a problem. So if you're on the free tier there are uh, downsides, being that you just have to play when you can play, and if it's not not working, it's not working. Notebook saved. So that's claiming to go. A equals four. Print a plus a plus five. So that ran. Okay, there we go. Now it, now we're going. So in particular, it also has. SK Learn, which is a nice built-in uh, machine learning library that I should probably just do a stream on at some point. Uh, SK Learn has all kinds of stuff. Oh, look at it. Yeah, you have tab completion up the wazoo. Check it out. This is crazy. I can say whatever dot base. And if you do the question mark like an IPython, the help appears down here. And you can say, all right, well, that's good. Like, I don't remember what's in base base estimator, right? So TF Learn, a lot of these other libraries, in like Keras, they try to follow the the syntax used by SK Learn and a lot of things, which stands for Scikit Learn. Scikit Learn has a lot of what you might call classical machine learning uh, models. It just runs on your CPU on your local machine, doesn't do anything fancy, but it's great for learning. It's great for just playing around and seeing what happens. So I thought. I bet base estimator, I bet linear or something. Problem is I don't remember exactly, exactly how things work, because there's a lot that you have to, like from SK learn import metrics, is what you got to do. And then in metrics, you get things like metrics dot confusion matrix, which is nice, and it will tell you like, oh, if you tell me Here's a vector of things that are true. Here's a vector of things that are predicted. Now it'll print you out a nice looking matrix saying like, oh, here's two that were class zero and actually are class zero. Here's one that was actually class zero, but we labeled, man, let me think about that. Was actually class two, but we labeled class zero. Yeah. Was actually class two, but we labeled class zero. Yes. Yeah, I always gotta get this straight. What row you're on is the truth. What column you're on is what you predicted. If you pass them incorrectly. If you don't pass them incorrectly, well, if you don't pass them in, comma, correctly. So that's just kind of a cool, a cool little thing. And the fact that it comes with TensorFlow is super nice. You used to have, like, I figured out how to install TensorFlow in this, and I made a little post about it on the internet. I didn't find anyone else who did this. But they just decided that no, TensorFlow is part of it. Now you, you don't have to play around. You just use Anaconda, Python 3, snap your fingers, you have TensorFlow. That's super, super great. What else do we have? Do I don't believe we have Keras. I do not believe that is something we get. Oh my gosh, do we get Keras now? Is this true? I did not think this was true. This is incredible. This, this changes my world. Oh man, hang on. Oh, that's so cool. That's so, so cool. I didn't, oh, one more caveat. This doesn't work in Firefox. 
you have to use Chrome or like Internet Explorer. This is a recent change. It used to work fine in Firefox. Maybe it was slow. Uh, so I had to install Chromium in my Ubuntu session today. This is an important, an important caveat. All right, actually, here's what I'm gonna do. Since Keras does work, oh, that's that's so awesome. I'm so glad that Keras works in this. I want to grab an sklearn data set and show me some data. So this is again just a previous model. I guess I should show you show you guys some plots. Let me grab this line. I need this. This belongs to me now. You can come back to a cell you previously ran. You know, just use it again. Whatever. Let's run that again. So we get the data sets. SK Learn comes pre-cooked with data sets. It's so good. Uh, you can insert cells. A lot of these things have keyboard shortcuts that I don't remember offhand. And I futzed around with uh, with this syntax, with the text editor in here, to use Vim once or twice. Right now, I'm not doing that. Uh, but that is something that I fiddle with. Because if I can get actual real Vim or Emacs or whatever you like inside this little text box, oh, that might be the best. Then, I, then I, that would might pull me away from Slimebox. Might. Just might. Uh, so you can look at data sets. And you get like a whole bunch of like small data sets for things. Load Boston, load. Load Iris. Hang on, I gotta remember what the dang data set is called. I think it's Iris, something or the other. Do, 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 do. Where's the Iris? There's a classic data set. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Iris. Datasets.load Iris. There we go. Well, that's not what I want. Load. You get tab completion. Bam! Iris, Iris. Not too many. That's more irises than I wanted. So you can just load that up. And then, I don't know, print iris of zero. I don't know, sure. It's not as instantaneous feedback as, uh, as I like with IPython. In IPython, I feel like it's, there's no waiting. This comes with a, this whole web front end thing. Uh, if you're running it locally, you're not gonna have that problem, but then you gotta install everything yourself. And that's kind of a big pain. Iris plants dead. You know what? Let's just iris dot iris dot data. There we go. There. So the data is just an array. We've got four features that tell you what kind of iris you're dealing with. There's three classes of iris, which would be target. 0, 1, and 2. Different kinds of plants. Different kind of flowers, I should say. Oh, I'm still I'm still just super stoked that we have carrots. That is so cool. Now I have to I have to remember all the imports that I always do from carrots dot core import What is this sequential? Uh, this is why I just need to like, yeah, I just need to go to one of my files on GitHub, like, I don't know, the self-driving car model, doesn't really matter which one. Yes, this is just the things that I need. There we go. Nope, again, I do not, I keep trying to tab complete, but that's not a thing that makes sense. I use Keras like every day and I still can never remember the exact import lines. You'd think I'd remember that at this point. There we go. Okay. So we'll grab that using Theano backend. What? Theano comes installed too? Uh, oh man. That's very sad. Cannot import name input. Oh, maybe that's not a thing anymore. That's probably not a thing I need. And an important name merge. You know what? I don't need any of it. I don't need this line at all. I, the version of Keras might not be what I'm used to. You have Theano too. This is crazy. I swear, like three months ago, it did not have these things. You had TensorFlow, and that was it. That's super cool. I 
not 100% sure how one would change the back end in here. You might need to uh, make a new file in the terminal and futz around with your dot theano, like dot theano RC essentially. Because it's just like a little Linux virtual machine. Maybe dot keras? Is that where? I don't remember where the back end gets defined. Keras.json. All right, maybe in there. Oh, that's not a command. That's I get used to my own Linux environment. Yeah, so I bet we could change the back end, the back end to TensorFlow. Let's do it, just because we can. Let's do it right here. Open up the Vim. Boom. TensorFlow. Even though I personally use. Uh, Theano, that's only because uh, that's what works in my GPU. Here, I don't have a GPU. What's going on? What's going on is we're checking out uh, Jupyter on Sage Math Cloud. Way to use Python and, and do data science in like a super convenient format. Comes built in with Markdown and code. Doesn't get much better than that. You can do sweet things like plot. It comes with TensorFlow, comes with Theano, comes with Keras. Batteries included, the, the easiest way of putting it. You want to do something nice, it's probably already there. And then you don't have to think about it anymore. It's not a very powerful computer, but if you wanted to pay money for them, you could have a more powerful computer. Uh, at that point, you might just want to get your own cloud instance or buy your own computer uh, to do it. But if you only need it for a little while, hey, that's all you got to do. Oh, time travel. Yeah, that's right. Oh, no, that's not what I want to do. Oh no! Yeah, you can sort of, every change you make is saved. I'm not 100% sure how it's doing that. IPython notebooks themselves are not a binary format exactly. There's a lot of base64 encoding and like JSON headers and stuff. I tried doing them, saving them in Markdown once or twice. But like all the outputs still get saved in a really funky way, so it doesn't quite work. I, I want a nice convenient way to just save the input to an IPython notebook. That's what I'd really like. And then you can rerun it whenever you want, say. But that's a, a problem for another day. So let's make a stupid little Keras model, actually. Yes, let's increase the font size a little bit for people. So say you've got a model, sequential, boom, tap complete it. We're going to do a couple things. We're going to define this whole model in the cell. Uh, let's add a dense layer of uh, just the three. Input shape equals four. Make sure I do this right. Four comma. I think that's right. Negative one. Negative one comma four. I don't even remember how my input shapes work. Who cares? This is this is sad. Da, 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 da. Of course, here I'm doing all kinds of wacky things. Let's go back to my GitHub repos. I got a lot of repos. Wow, more than I thought. Let's go to the old font classification model. Uh, there's just some simple, simple stuff there. That's what I'm nothing more than showing my history input shape. Yeah, just the number of features. So that's going to be four comma. Because you recall our data, maybe you don't, had four features in it. So we're predicting three probabilities. We got four features. It made all the closed parentheses for us. That's so nice. So nice. Activation. And this will be softmax. Some a little bit of logistic regression. It closes strings for you automatically. These are things I like. I really appreciate that. Uh, SGD, let's make some stochastic gradient descent, shall we? Look at that. And also, if you are opening your parentheses, if you decide to close it yourself, it doesn't add an extra one. It just knows, oh yeah, you're just closing the one. So you don't even have to think about it. You don't want to use it, you don't have to. Model.compile. All right. Optimizer equals SGD. 
class equals categorical cross intro v and metrics equals accuracy. Okay, that should be good. You run that unexpected keyword metrics. So now it's like the version of the version of Keras that might be a little a little confused. Da, 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 optimizer class. I guess you don't need that anymore. Maybe when I go to fit. This might be an older. Keras 0.3.2. I'm not actually sure how old that is. So one uh, problem using things that are just already pre-installed you have to deal with however recent those are. So that was February 2016. That might explain why this might not even work with TensorFlow. That uh, I don't recall when TensorFlow support was added. Uh, in the meantime, however, current Keras is at 1.1.2. Yeah, how many versions are there between? It doesn't even say. No, oh, that's kind of kind of a bummer. I don't want, I want specifically, ah, oh well. All right, so this is an old, old version of Keras. Metrics is not a thing that exists anymore, or not a thing that exists yet, I should say. That's not what I wanted. Oh, did I lose my, oh, I didn't, woohoo. But that means that it will actually compile when it comes to compile time. So that's good and bad. And then you want to say h equals model.fit. We're going to say data dot features. Come on. I don't have tab completion in this little bit. That's unfortunate. It's not data, it's called iris. That's why I'm confused. Iris dot data. Oh, hang on. We need to convert to one hot one hot encoding. And that's from Keras dot utils import to categorical. I think that's a thing. It is not a thing. Oh, um, it might not exist yet. Crud. That's an irritation. I don't recall if that's an SK learn thing. I think in SK learn you don't even have to you don't even have to do that. All right, that's going to be length of iris. target comma 3. And I'm just going to say for i and iris. Do this the terrible way. I'm sure there's a faster way to do this. Iris.target. I think I can get away with that. Oh, yeah. Oh. Automatic uh, indentation. Very nice. Target. Not I. No, no, no. T, comma, I. Let's zip this up. There we go. Doink. T of I equals 1. I think I can get away with this. I think I can get away with this. Let me just print target afterwards. Just to see. You might say, oh, that's a whole bunch of ones in the first slot. Chill. They come out later. And then get rid of that. There we go. So iris.data, now it's all one hot encoded and target. And oh snap, you can tab complete inside the uh, function. So I could say, hey, number epics equals 100. What else do we have? Is there show accuracy equals true? What else is there? This is super cool. This is something I'm not used to having. Uh, validation split. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Equals 0 0.1. Sure. I don't even remember. There's not that much data here. That might not even make sense. Bam. Look at that. 
Uh, we have 135 samples in our actual data set, which should mean that we've got about 13 samples in our validation set, which is not very many, but we're just playing around. This is simple, basically logistic regression right now. Just to get familiar with using Keras in here, it's an older Keras, it doesn't have everything nice, but again, if you're just starting out, a great way to just get used to it without, uh, without having to figure out how to install anything or futz with any of that stuff. You can play with sklearn, it comes with a lot of data sets that are simple and small and will not overtax your computer. IOPUB message read. Excuse me. Whoa, wait, what? No, wait, we'll temp temporarily stop sending IOPUB messages. Well, I hope that's not a problem. Uh, and so here, the validation accuracy you'll notice is 0.333, which is pretty terrible given that there's only three classes. And the actual accuracy is listing at, uh, well, 80%. I say actual on the training data. Uh, but given the small number of data points, I would not be surprised that this is uh, troublesome, just because you could have a couple bad bad data points that are themselves outliers, and that throws off this whole business. I want to show off one thing, how to make this this sweet picture. Uh, let me copy some of this code. Copy. There we go. Actually, you know what? I can probably just run it right here. Can I do that? Is that something I can do? Nah, I'm afraid I'll ruin it. I'm a ruiner. I ruin things. Uh, I gotta fix up a couple things real quick. Okay. So you might want to ask, well, we trained a great, a great model. That's, that's awesome. How do we actually uh, plot this? Or what does that even look like? So, the best way to plot this one, and yeah, well, maybe not the best, if you're only using two variables, say, only interested in those, uh, you know what, there's just too much garbage here. Too much garbage. What is, why is this X? There's a problem of like looking at this and I haven't looked at it in like nine months or something. X is my data, okay. That's that's fine then. There we go. Just make sure I copy that stuff. Doink. And paste it in, okay, perfect. And you know what, you can sell, you can say, hey, I wanna split the cell here. Because uh, this is not a bunch of stuff I wanna run all the time. Oh hey, you might want model.predict Predict classes, predict on probe. That's what I want. Yeah. So we're going to use the model to predict at a whole bunch of points. Float and history. Oh, oh, oh there we go. That's just me missing, missing a point on my grid. Oh, it's not happy about something. Oh boy. Shape mismatch. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's not the entire model. Right. I want everything. Let me think about this here. So, what I want, what I really, really want. I'm going to call this, it's like a w, w, I just need a couple more variables, that's all I need, give me a couple more variables, and this will be two, two, this will be three, the last feature, just because this was only designed for, with uh, a few in mind, with using two of the features, but we're actually using more of them. Wah. What if a mesh grid can do what I'm about to ask it to do? We're gonna find out as we try to ask for a mesh grid in four dimensions. This also might be freaking enormous. So we should change the step size uh, to like 0.25 because otherwise it is gonna get out of control. 
Might get out of control anyway. That is the nature, nature of the beast. W, W, this is getting long on this line, so let's tack that over. There we go. Dunk. Let's do a quick bit of Z here. What I don't like is I... And... Da, 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 da. Uh, www.ravel. This is just some stuff to put it in the shape it's expecting, that's all. Not going to worry about it right now. Did not like that. Next two is out of bounds for axis one with size two. Really? Oh. There we go. Message pub rate exceeded. That's fine. No problem with that. Uh, let's insert a cell above. Let me just look at the Z. All right, so that's a bunch of predictions. Perfect. All right, we want to put them into an appropriate shape. I think this will actually work then. Da, 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 da. Let's see how that actually goes. Yeah, nope, didn't think so. Did not think so. Plot is not. To oh gosh, I never. You can just say matplotlib inline, I think. Yeah, that just sets up the plotting environment to be relatively automatic. Let's see what's broken now. Plot is not defined. Fine. We'll just say from matplotlib.pyplot import plot. That's plt? Is that a thing? Yeah. Then we'll say plot that ion. There's no feature ion. Fine. Fine then. No, 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 no. I did this wrong. One of these days, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, plt.ion. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. <laughs> oh, I gotta get a great empty picture. Too many values to unpack. Expected two. I don't understand. You should be fine. There are XX and YY are only only those many things. Why are you yelling yakking at me, pal? Oh, the mesh grid might be really weird. Alright, well if this doesn't work, then uh that's fine. That's what I get for trying to do funky things. That that is indeed the only thing that you get. For trying to do things live, that is the danger, that is the risk. Uh, what is xx? So what is ooh, xx dot shape? 14, 19, 24, 14. That's a little weird. What is yy dot shape? Same thing. Uh, www dot shape. Same thing. I think this actually did what I wanted it to. xx. You know, some kind of grid, but it's a four-dimensional grid. Oh. oh my gosh. Right. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So if I say x min, x min, x min x. Yeah, yes, you only get the last one, of course. So, I need to just extract those two. Uh, so I needed all of them to do this business, but I don't really want all of them. Man, that is irritation. Again, I gotta look at the shape and try to infer now which direction am I, go, am I trying to go here. There's four dimensions because I'm doing something wacky. Senpai, let me just understand mesh grid a little bit more. Makes ND coordinate arrays of vectorized evaluations, given these, yada, yada, yada. So yeah. So I think I just want the first two things. If I say XX, everything, comma, everything, comma, zero, comma, zero. Is that what I want? Okay, I think that's what I want. 
losing my mind, losing my mind. Everything comma everything comma zero comma zero. Likewise for the y. Everything comma everything comma zero comma zero comma zero. All right. Let's see what that does. Still not happy about something. Ah, oh, come on. Too many values on back. Expected two. There are only two values. You are lies, lies, my friend. Does it expect only one? P color mesh. These are the positions. And these are the, that is the value. And that's the color it's plotting the value at. The Z being the true, oh, X, X, not G. Oh, 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 I see, I see, I see. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Colon, comma, colon, comma, zero, comma, zero. One more time. I'll tell you one of these damn days. One of these days, total size new ray must be unchanged. Yeah, figures. What is the Z shape? Why, why is that the case? That doesn't make sense. Z should just be whatever the length of. Ew. I see. I see. No, no, no. This can stay the way it is. This needs to be the same same story. Because it was predicting a point in a four-dimensional space, but I really only want to do it in two dimensions. Hey, that's that is vaguely what we wanted. You'll note that this model is absolutely awful because those other two dimensions don't actually matter that much in this. Uh, perhaps. Maybe they do. You could swap this XXYY business for uh, WW. ZZ, if you wanted to futz around with that, you change the, the limits. Let's do that. Let's. Can I copy this cell? Copy cell. Yeah, there we go. Edit, paste cell below. Make a new cell. Here's our new cell. We're going to do W, Z, and we just need to change the limits here. W. And Z. The sepal length and sepal width are no longer correct labels, but just for the purposes of fussing around with this, that doesn't really matter. Uh, apparently we don't have colors on here, which is interesting. Did I miss one of these goobers? Oh, here we go. Two. Three. That might be more. Okay, so they're plotted in the correct place. The grid is not occurring in the correct place, which is a little frustrating. You see how you could divide these up here. Why is the grid not showing up as well? That's the p-color mesh business here. Oh, wrong, wrong business here. Now at zero comma zero, comma colon comma colon. The, the problems of looking at n-dimensional data. This is why two dimensional two dimensions so much easier to understand. Hey, what do you know? And in fact, now it's actually doing something not crazy. You look like the blues are down here in this corner. I mean, that's fine. Uh, the reds are clustered here. You'd want the red to cut through the plane around here somewhere, and the browns are over here. But we've got a lot of variables that don't matter. We didn't train that much. Uh, there's lots of things you could futz around with to make this work. Uh, but that's that's all I wanted to really show concerning Sage Math Cloud and Jupyter Notebooks. I think it's really cool. It's a great way to just play around, see what works, see what doesn't. Costs you zero to just get started and try some things. Got Markdown built in. So you can do things like make sweet links to things. If you wanted to go like that, you can get to Google. You can do whatever. You can embed pictures. You can embed videos. Uh, it's a great way to document whatever you're working on. 
So you, and it has the code built in, so anyone else who looks at it can see exactly what you did to understand what's going on. Obviously, this, as I'm working right now, is kind of raw. Uh, and you would clean it up a little bit. Maybe you don't need all this output of the training. Maybe you don't need the output from a particular thing at all. Maybe you're only dealing with the, the inputs and you save off your graphics later and stuff them in where you need. But you can do LaTeX, you can do whatever. So that, I think, is all we're going to cover for Jupyter Notebooks on Sage Math Cloud. It's super convenient. I really like it. I don't use it as much because I don't want to pay any money. And I like my terminal-based setup. But if you're just getting started, again, it can be a great way to check things out. IPython Notebooks. Check it out. All right. I think that's all we got tonight. So I want to thank everyone for coming out. And always stay safe in the data mines. Have a good night.